about open forums for the next 15, 20 minutes and maybe possibly take decision on, on uh, including those proposed open forums. And please use uh, this time to submit uh, proposals to Secretariat over there and um, uh, then in 10-15 minutes uh, when this job will be done we could uh, uh, go back to the workshop selection. If that is acceptable then we could proceed in, in, in that way. I see no objections. Uh, then I would like to ask uh, Cengetai to drive back to the table <laughs> <laughs> and introduce subject of open forums. <laughs> um. <laughs> Thank you very much, Janus. Um, for the open forums, we do you have, um, we sent out a call for open forums, and we do have uh, 20, sorry, 27 open forums which were submitted. Uh, 20 of those uh, the Secretariat looked at, and we deem that those ones are the ones that actually fit the requirements or the d description for an open forum. That is a government or a major transnational um, organization that is, has activities in internet governance um, fora. So these ones are, can, can we get them on the, we can? Uh, briefly. Yes, briefly, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, just quickly so that you can see. Okay. They're also on, on the one of the worksheets. Yes, um, it's also on one of the um, worksheets. So, Open Forum's major transnational or intergovernmental organization engaged in internet governance or internet governance issues and also um, countries, member states, okay. or observers. Yes, correct. Could you just resend them just, just to Open Forum's once on the mail? Um, Who has it? Okay. Uh, anyway, it's still it's the same workshop, but I'll resend it. Which list is it on? Okay. Don't worry. I'll resend it. It's, easy. it's always easier. Uh, yes. Yes, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, just to make sure I'm looking at the right chart, um, the list I see has 25 proposals, of which 17 were deemed to meet the minimum. Uh, you, s you had different numbers. Um, uh, proposers sent them through a different format, and since it wasn't specified, we had to add them. And which are those three proposals that meet the criteria? Uh, okay. They aren't on the list? Uh, just hold on. I will um, read them out. So it's um, Open Forum by the European Commission, GIPO, um, Open Forum by UNCTAD, and also by the Government of Brazil. So, shall I read them out, or is it okay? They're on the screen. So you can you can maybe expand a little bit the uh, the, the picture. Okay, I'll just read them out while it's being expanded. So we have um, APNIC, um, APC, Commonwealth Tele Telecommunications Organization, Council of Europe. Um, Government of India, Diplo Foundation, um, Institute of e Electrical and Electronic Engineers, Internet Corporation, that's ICANN, sorry, ISOC, EBU, uh, Cuba, Net Mundial Initiative, OECD, um, UNHCR, Synetics, uh, the, the U.S. Department of State, UNESCO, Government of Brazil, European Commission, as I've said, and UNCTAD. The other list is um, the ones that we did not deem um, to fit the criteria is um, Bizarga Rural Open Source and Development Initiative because they're um, more nas nationally focused um, 
uh, non-government organization, um, Center for International Governance Innovation, Chartered Institute of Arbit Arbitrators for London, um, Digital Infrastructure Association, the Internet Society of India, Les Angeles de Salle, and um, MSH, because um, they were either very small or very locally focused. Uh, does anybody have any comments? Oh, uh, one other thing is that um, we're not giving them an hour and a half slot. Uh, we have decided to give them a 60 minute slot so that um, we can conserve space. Does anybody have any comments on the list? Yes, Marilyn. Oh, do you want to carry on? Sorry, I'm taking, uh, sorry, I was overstepping. Uh, so let me give it back to Giannis. Uh, thank you, Chengetai, for introducing the topic. Another one, please. Thank you. I just, it's Marilyn Kate speaking. I just have a point of clarification. As I recall in the very early days, open forums were um, um, limited to governments and IGOs. And I, I think now you're um, describing the idea that an open forum could also be organized by a NGO, et cetera. I just want to make a comment about the, the guidance and guidelines for, IG, for uh, open forums. If, um, we, we don't seem to, we do not have the criteria for open forums in terms of representing all points of views or being ge geographically diverse in the panelists, et cetera. So I respect that. But I also want to understand, and maybe we do this going forward, uh, maybe we need to return to having a little more guidance about who qualifies. I'm not talking about for the IGF 2015, but who qualifies to submit an open forum. Otherwise, I see perhaps a rush of um, entities, and that, if I have workshop proposals from the same group or the same group is heavily represented as a speaker in uh, workshops and they also submit open forums, um, then I'm, I have an imbalance, but it's not easy to find that imbalance or be aware of it until after the fact. Thanks. So thank you, Marilyn. I, I think this is a, a very sensible proposal. Uh, Bahir? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just a, a point of clarification. Uh, is, is the suggestion um, to, to allow uh, open forums one, one hour instead of uh, 90 minutes? All of them. And is this, a, is this subject to further discussion, or is this in light of some other restrictions? No, it is. It is uh, since we have uh, many uh, maybe more than usual uh, proposals for um, open forum. Uh, it was uh, uh, calculated within the uh, uh, sort of uh, slots available, and that, that is pure, purely limitation based on uh, available space. Uh, if we increase to 90 minutes, uh, which means that then we are carving in in uh, workshop. Uh, uh, numbers and, and uh, we, we uh, intentionally made a proposal 60 minutes or in, uh, in preliminary calculations of course nothing is decided everything is in, in hands of the mag and if mag will say no we need to go for uh, 90 minutes so be it but then we need to deduct uh, 10, work uh, 10 workshops uh, from, from the list of 100 so that, that's a consequence uh, we have a remote participant. Uh, we have uh, uh, one quick uh, request for clarification from Subi. Uh, she's asking about the number of uh, sl available slots. And then we have a uh, uh, ginger in the queue. So the number of? Number of available slots is 20, as suggested now. 20, as suggested. Yes. OK, so um, um, ginger, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. I'm hoping you can hear me well. Uh, this is Ginger Park from Diplo Foundation and Meg, and that I wanted to clarify that because Diplo did uh, make a request for an open forum, 
but also because of that I do know a little bit what we used as our criteria and you will see on the web page that it says organizations dealing with internet governance related issues are invited to submit a request for an open forum da, 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 in order to present and discuss their activities the meetings should focus on the organization's activities during the past year and allow sufficient time for questions and discussions. And I point that out, Marilyn, uh, in particular, because it's not meant to be have balanced speakers, but to present a project. For instance, Dippo will be presenting the um, the new, it's not an observatory, it's called the Geneva Digital Watch, which will uh, discuss uh, digital licit issues, their complexity across disciplines, which, you know, makes that uh, hard to follow effectively, so it will offer some analysis, as, as well as the updates and timeline and monthly summaries of what's going on. So this is a point where another group like, Di like Diplo might be presenting their activities and their projects, so it won't particularly be balanced in, in speakers, I think. So I think we should... Uh, be cautious about intervening in what kinds of presentations because they're precisely for that purpose. Thank you. So thank you, Ginger, for your comment. Uh, I have Virat next online. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just as full disclosure, I have re been requested by the Government of India, whose proposal has made it here to moderate the session. Uh, but I just wanted to um, submit, uh, there are four governments who have submitted open forums, India, Cuba, US, and Brazil. I'm assuming that the Net Mundial Initiative proposal is by CGR, or I'm not sure if it's by the government of Brazil, or is it by, it is by the government. So the, sorry? Because that wasn't mentioned. So, so there's Peregrine, and two from Brazilian government, there's uh, United States, Cuba, and India. In view of the fact that we are um, short on the workshops from governments, um, you, the MAG might wish to consider uh, a distribution of time slots and um, 90 minutes for governments and uh, 60 minutes for the others, if that helps. I'm not saying that we can solve everything with that. But I think we need a, um, I, it's just very difficult for developing country governments to get the permission to get on a plane and go to Brazil. Um, and if you give them a half hour slot or an hour slot, I think they might not get the permission that they need from the ministers and funding that they require to sign off on the files. So we should be just sensitive about this. I'm not saying we need to take a decision now, but please keep in mind the difficulties some of these governments have in getting approvals to travel that far. So thank you very much for this uh, proposal, uh, Michael. Um, I, I think the staff, the secretary, has done a wonderful job in differentiating between those that meet the criteria and those that don't. I just had uh, three things to say. Um, I think changing the time slots at this point would be a bad idea. People propose to do an hour long, I mean, people propose to do an open forum, and I think we can fit them into 60 minutes. Um, I think people who s were smart enough to submit for an open forum had a much higher chance of being accepted, and I think that's part of the benefit. I'd note, though, we do have um, one place where 90 minutes might make sense. The Council of Europe has its own proposal, number four, and it is teamed up with the UN High Commission on Human Rights. Perhaps combining those two into 90 minutes would make some sense. The only thing I would question about the way this has been broken up is that um, line number 24 uh, among the proposals that did not meet the criteria is for a brand new organization, an industry organization in the Netherlands that really brings together all the key co uh, company sectors. And I think it's a very interesting project. 
And I would note that if they had been smart enough to team up with the Dutch government, they probably would have been accepted in a minute. So I, 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 I'd like to know a little bit more why the DINL was not selected. But I think the other ones clearly don't meet the criteria. So thank you very much. Virat? I have a clarification. Did, did, when we put out the proposals, was it for 90 minutes or 60 minutes? I, we didn't specify the length of time. But we've always had it for 90 minutes yeah, for the last so 10 years. Yeah. Traditionally, it has been 90 okay. minutes. So I just want to say, and not 60 minutes. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, we have never had so many uh, requests uh, uh, at the time. Have you a participant? Okay, Subi, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Um, yes, we hear you. On open, thank you. Uh, on open forums, I'm really, really heartened that we have so much interest. But I do believe that we have some parameters in place. And smartness or the fact that you've been a veteran at this should not be a quick, easy, and less competitive solution to getting into an open forum slot when you're clearly eligible for a workshop. There has been tradition and there's been documented parameters of who makes it into an open forum. Um, while it's fantastic to encourage new proposers to also uh, fill in proposals for workshops, open forums, we agree. Our, when initiatives have reached a certain level of maturity, and I also second the suggestion that was just made, I believe we need to enhance the role of governments and government participation at the IGF, so a 90-minute slot for governments is something that I would second. I also want us to be careful, uh, because it should not be a case of I knew about this availability and therefore I applied for it. Um, I would want to see open forums reserved for governments and intergovernmental organizations as we have had in tradition and with very good reason. I support Marilyn's comments on those issues. Thank you. So thank you very much. Yes. The, uh, Junior just uh, wanted to uh, make note that uh, shortening the open forums um, will uh, likely cut off audience participation. Okay, uh, I, th I think uh, responding to Sub Subi's um, uh, last last point, uh, Secretariat followed the uh, the rules and and uh, Ginger read out those rules, and uh, there is no. Uh, contradiction. If we need to review uh, principles, that's a different story. Uh, we certainly can can do it, uh, but not for this year, because we are not changing the rules of the game during the game. Uh, for 2016, we uh, we may revisit and see what type of criteria we could put for open forms. So after uh, hearing different different opinions. Um, May I suggest the, the, the following, that uh, we would accept proposed uh, 20 uh, workshops, sorry, so open forums, that uh, for the moment we would retain 60-minute uh, slots and would uh, ask Secretariat, in case of possibility, uh, provide 90-minute uh, slots uh, for open forums with a preference to governments, especially governments traveling very far uh, to Brazil. It means that Paraguay go government may not have privilege vis-a-vis -vis Indian government, for instance. Uh, and then uh, remaining issue, uh, as uh, Michael suggested on DINL, we would, we would uh, do additional inquiries and would revert back to the MAG uh, at one of the next uh, meetings uh, and would inform about uh, the results of this inquiry. Would that be acceptable? Uh, one question. So you said that uh, 90 minutes for governments. How about IGO, UNESCO, COE? We have uh, 60 minutes or 90 minutes. 
So as, as I said, uh, for the moment, uh, default would be 60 minutes for everyone and then instruct secretariat in case we can carve out some additional uh, time and, 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 and space. So then we would uh, uh, give additional 30 minutes, starting with the governments, then following intergovernmental organizations. I see no objections. So then we could proceed in uh, such a way. Now I would like to ask Secretariat to see if we are ready to move on to the selection. We are. Good. So then this is what we will do. And statistics on the current ones as well. Current distribution. Uh, would you like to present them yourself? Yeah, I think that's better. I'll just pick up. So we will, we will now uh, uh, put on the screen the distribution statistics on uh, current situation after 70 accepted uh, uh, workshops. Uh, Michael, please. While we're filling time, um, do we have closure on the dynamic coalition sessions? I notice in the worksheet that there's a number of ones that seem to be unresolved. Do we have uh, updated information on that? No, we don't. Not yet. Okay. We will revisit this, this issue. Okay. And do we know, are the dynamic coalitions also a one-hour time slot, uh, or what, what was the whole format for them? Uh, we, we still have Okay, but during the during the normal schedule, is that yeah, correct? No, during the normal schedule. Okay. Uh, Carl, would you like to uh, speak uh, and and uh, explain? You you need to come to to the microphone. He says we can just read out the numbers. So could, okay, let, let, me, let me try to, to see that, that far. So when, when we look to the uh, distribution, current distribution, we have on, um, on sub-themes. I, I, I can't see, sorry. Okay. For the current statistics on the sub-themes, we have... Oh, no, you have to read them up. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'm, ge I'm getting close to that age as well. 11% um, <laughs> uh, is... Yeah, okay, so mm -hmm. this is just an update of the distribution after the top 70 selections. And uh, as you can see there, the, the largest sub-theme is still Internet and Human Rights, uh, followed by... Which could you give the percentages? Uh, it's 30% on Internet and Human Rights. And then we have 20% uh, if I don't... I think 20% yeah, on enhancing multi-stakeholder cooperation. Um, Unfortunately, I can't bring my computer up to the mic. That's why it's a little bit tricky. Um, uh, what are you going to send to, uh, send, send to me, and then I can read them. I'll send it to Shangitai, and then he'll pass it around. So thank you. And in the meantime, please put also uh, uh, the, the compiled uh, list on the screen.
So while we're waiting, there is a remote participant asking for the floor. Yes, uh, Ginger, uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. I know this might be a little unusual and probably the moment has passed, but I have been asked to uh, make an intervention by Pat Ryan. Who, um, and because it involves a, a specific workshop from, the, from Russia, I would like to read his proposal. We're talking about number 58, Empowerment Through Quality Online Education. This proposal is from the Russian academics that are here. It's a non-traditional group, but I've worked with them on their workshop in the past three years and have been very favorably impressed with their work. They're surely part of the state machine there, as all universities are, but definitely not mouthpieces for government. The proposal needs support because it's ranked in the lower quartile. I believe it's worth exceptional effort here because this group is genuinely different and brings a very unusual perspective to the discussion. So I thought it was important to include this proposition. If we can still look at it, great. If not, I'm sure Patrick understands. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much. I, I think every, everything uh, what we need to discuss, we will discuss, and um, your proposal is noted. I was just uh, I was just asking secretary to put uh, to put on the on the screen those uh, uh, workshop proposals that uh, you have indicated to the secretary that we should discuss. Uh, I hope they are now on. Uh, not really visible, but anyway, we'll try. Um, and uh, in the meantime, Chengita will distribute uh, the, uh, the statistics uh, for 70% agreed. So let us, uh, uh, let us now um, move on and start uh, 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 populating the list of uh, proposals that MAG members think should be considered uh, in a view of balancing current uh, uh, list uh, with, um, uh, with with accepted workshops. So, who would like to start? We we heard one one proposal, uh, workshop eighty five. Uh, but I would like to uh, to take sorry fifty fifty eight. Yes, please, Virat. Mr. Chairman, I think th those who have recommended that these proposals should come up are in the best position to explain why. I suppose we should either hear that explanation or, I mean... No, abso absolutely. Abs this, this is my intention. And the, and, this, and the question I have is, are these proposals ranked below 100 or below 80? Below 70, sorry. Where, where have these been picked from? Are these proposals in the first hundred? Yeah, so start from 70. It's sorry, I can't read anything here. Starts it's hard to read it. 75. Our rank is 80. 
What is the rank? Well, the first one is 75. The line is 75. The rank is 82. Okay, let, let me, let me uh, now... Uh, Establish the follow, following procedure. So we, we have now uh, the list of uh, proposals that have been submitted to Secretariat. They are they are listed on on, on the screen. The uh, proposals. Uh, the, the the first column is uh, the workshop number. The second column is current score, and that that uh, answers your question whether they are in top 100 or, or top uh, uh, 200 uh, and so the uh, the uh, fourth column the, f the fourth column is number of uh, mag members who have expressed support uh, to, to that, that that proposal so uh, and i would like now to take one by one here and uh, ask uh, those who made this proposal uh, to introduce the, the workshop and give us a reasoning why you think this proposal is uh, uh, should should be examined. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, please. The, okay. I'm sorry. W w the ranking in the first hundred. Which column is that? I, I think it's the second one. Thanks for ranking. Yes, so the second column that says rank there, yeah. that is the ranking according to the grading, the, the total grading that we've been looking on all day. Uh, the fourth column, uh, to the right of the yellow column, that illustrates how many MAG members also highlighted the same proposal. The one on the left of the yellow column is the one that gives the ranking from 1 to 200, whatever, right? Exactly, exactly. So, should, then a question for you, Mr. Chairman, should we start with those which are below 100? Because that, those are the ones who are struggling to get in. If I may uh, interrupt, please. Yes. Uh, could we could we uh, just make an explanation for the guys on the remote participation? What Excel file is this? What tab we are looking at, so they can find it on their computers? So we uh, we're looking at uh, at the spreadsheet uh, of uh, workshops that uh, was compiled during the lunch time. Uh, on the basis of proposals made by uh, MAG members. And uh, these are the ones that we will examine uh, during this session. This uh, spreadsheet, if hasn't been sent yet, is about to be sent to all uh, IGF uh, MAG list, uh, uh, on IGF MAG list. Yeah. So in a in few minutes you will get it. And uh, as I... As I see, uh, I, I think you, you will understand which, uh, uh, which sheet you need to look at. Unless Carl will tell me. What's, what's the name of the sheet? Can this be sent to us? It's going to be sent. I'm sending it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's on the way. Uh, on the procedure, is everything is clear? Michael. I think one thing that's not clear is that that's not the entire spreadsheet and that if you go down to the next page, you will have those proposals, including many that were between 70 and 100, which got one person to support them. So I think it's fair to say we, we have a decision here. Um, do we want to start with those proposals where at least three MAG members thought they were exceptionally good and needed to be considered, or do we look at the whole sheet and look at everything that at least one MAG member thought was useful? So yeah, here's the rest of the sheet, and as you can see, we have a lot of choices here. We have, what, what's the total number here? We've got... Um, How many, how many do we have that people have nominated total? So we have 50 highlighted uh, or nominated workshops. Right. And we have 30 
uh, 30 slots. Right. So that's the, that's our challenge for today. Yes. That 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 is challenge, and uh, we uh, need to cope with that challenge. Uh, and I, I think it would be just fair to start with those uh, who have been supported initially by uh, more more mag members than than just one. But nevertheless, we need we need to go through all uh, 50 proposals, uh, and uh, after every uh, so and, and actually, I think we we uh, cannot uh, accept. Uh, or make a final definite decision, uh, but we can put proposals preliminary uh, on, the, uh, on, on the list based on uh, a certain uh, criteria that will be explained by those who supported and proposed them. Uh, and then we will see how far we can get. And uh, Flavio, you want to say something? So we have uh, 50 workshops that have been highlighted. It does not mean that we will select the remaining 30 workshops from this list of 50 proposed because we still have our original ranking from position 70, 71, 72 and so on that we have to respect. So we have to a little bit merge those two criteria, follow the ranking, the original ranking and try to accommodate as many as possible from uh, workshops from this list of highlighted ones. I think the most, most important uh, is to understand why we're doing this. We're doing this uh, to balance uh, the uh, imbalances that we have identified. And uh, these imbalances are uh, not uh, sufficient government uh, proposals. Uh, not sufficient uh, representation of some of the sub-themes that we have identified uh, and, and, um, and not or we need to look at uh, very new subjects which have not, not been touched uh, or discussed at IGF for instance so and uh, uh, based on these criteria, we would then uh, collectively say we think it, it is worth considering this or that uh, proposal. If we will, if we will see that uh, a proposal does not meet any of those uh, balancing criteria, so then of course we would not retain it. And uh, w after every. Uh, after a certain period of time, most probably at the end of the day, we will uh, again ask Secretariat to provide the statistics and see uh, whether our decisions have made any uh, balance or not uh, on, on, on the list. Please, please, go ahead. It was not clear before lunch that we would give preference to this uh, list of highlighted uh, workshops, not, at least not for me that would give preference to this list instead of following the original ranking. We think we have two competing uh, procedures there, methodologies to... to, to no, uh, and if we would do just mathematics, then we would not need to do this, this balancing act. We would take 100, top 100 and that's it. And in top 100 we would see that there is not enough uh, governmental representation and so on. So therefore, uh, we, I asked uh, MAG, MAG members to uh, give Secretariat uh, proposals uh, which workshops we should uh, uh, look through and examine uh, based on understanding that they would be the ones which we would uh, bring up higher than they are. Uh, and they would do this balancing um, job and bring those underrepresented things uh, in, the, in the program. So, uh, and, and if there are 30, I think there will be less than 30 because uh, it will not be a beauty contest. I like this and that's why it need, need to, to be uh, brought in. There will be discussion and that will be collective decision. And uh, uh, why, don't, why don't we give a chance and uh, we start, start this process and then we will see how, how it goes. This is more or less the same thing that we did last, uh, last year as well, when we uh, uh, went through uh, proposals by individual MAG members and then uh, decided to add or decided not to add. 
Uh, Michael, please. Just to add to your excellent, ex excellent explanation as why we're doing this, the other reason we're doing this and not just taking the list from the first rankings is because if we were to look at those proposals we have not yet accepted in light of the ones that have been accepted, many as of us would change our rankings quite dramatically. In some cases, there were two proposals from the same organization. They covered similar topics. We might have ranked them both well, but we didn't want both of them to be accepted. And so I think that's why we need to do this second round and reevaluate some of the ones that we've, some of our ra earlier rankings. The other thing that's very important to realize is that more than 10 MAG members did not do the full ranking of proposals. Some of them are in the room, and this is their chance to make input on those proposals that they think would be useful. They bring another perspective that I think helps round out the criteria for us. So I think this is a critical, important way to do it. In the end, I think the majority of the ones we're going to add are going to be ones that were ranked pretty highly. So thank you, Hassan. Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Well, um, um, I have a different opinion because uh, the fact that uh, uh, MAG members were allowed to suggest uh, proposals, does, uh, if two are suggesting uh, the proposal, does not mean that this proposal is better than if one is suggesting it. Uh, it simply th means that this proposal deserves to be considered. Now we have to look back to the ranking, the original ranking. So my 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 opinion is original ranking, whether it is suggested by one, two, or three, should be considered uh, as a priority. Thank you. So in any in any case, we need to go through all all 50 proposals. So, and then I would like to encourage us to start this uh, uh, process and see how far we can get. Uh, uh, Juan Antonio and then Viran. Thank you, Chairman. And I think that we must begin. And I think I ask my colleagues to please give some hand to the Chairman to, to move this uh, and see how it goes. So, to begin, I was one of the that proposed uh, workshop proposal 171 is regarding the IXPs. And I put it because although in the, they say that is uh, civil society, actually there's some intergovernmental organizations there like the Caribbean Telecommunication Union is one of the sponsors of this workshop. And also the topic, of IXPs, well, we have here our Brazilian friends, they're going to have one expert in this workshop as well. IXP has proved to be an essential tool in order to lower access cost in, uh, well, not only developing countries, also in, in developed countries. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's a thing that, okay, so th that's the main <laughs> argument. I will uh, stop it uh, at there. So thank, thank you. Shall we, shall we move on to the, to the examination? Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to say that I am I, I, a little uncomfortable with this. I, I just want to be clear about this. 28 or 30 MAG members voted a proposal to the Simon 71st rank. And two MAG members now propose that we should bring in something that's 180. I'm just picking a number. Up into the first 100 to remove someone that was actually got themselves a score at 71 by 30 MAG members. The, it, we're, we're really reversing the stuff on its head, w one point. And second, the, the, the criteria that you laid on governments is completely understandable, even though I've insisted again and again that the government representation is proportionate to the proposal that's submitted. But to suggest that subjects have not been covered, we invited people to submit proposals based on sub-themes that were identified. Now we are penalizing those who stuck to the directions of the MAG and submitted straight and narrow proposals on the sub-themes in favor of new theme or new subjects that are not covered. So I just want to be very careful about what we are doing in terms of just simple maths. But 
I don't want to take it beyond this point, but I just want to you know, lay out some of the downside of rejecting 30, 40 MAG members having voted in favor of a ranking and picking something which is 190 to bring it in. Uh, we, we need, we need to, to do this balancing. And uh, other, otherwise, uh, uh, let's just take 100 and, and go, go and uh, get criticized from, from every quarter. We, 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 we may expect criticism. So that, that's why we're here. And I see no reason why we shouldn't uh, or why we couldn't go through these proposals and to see how many of those 50 which have been uh, suggested uh, are acceptable. It may happen that there will be only five. And then we will take 25 uh, from, from uh, 70 and, and so if we will identify that there are 10, we will take 20 from, from the highest rankings and add those 10. But if, if it will appear that there are uh, 30, then, then we will need to discuss what, what to do in that, that case. So and then your argument that uh, how, whether, whether uh, we should do it or not because um, it may happen that these proposals would not change anything and would not meet any of criteria, simply we think it would be a good idea. So then of course uh, argument that uh, good idea does not uh, substitute a high ranking by, by 40 would, would apply. So that's why I think we should we should continue. Giacomo, please, you you are asking for the floor. Yes, it's uh, a matter of method because um, when I made the evaluation, I also made some suggestions for a merging of uh, workshops, uh, and now I didn't recommend to add other workshops because. I still wait to know if this merging proposal will be considered or not. Because if we are, we are starting to evaluate a single workshop and single workshop without knowing if there is any chance that this will merge, then uh, it's proceeding in the other way around. So, uh, Giacomo, we have uh, spoken about mergers many, many, many times, and um, uh, we may propose mergers, but uh, uh, it does not necessarily mean that uh, workshop organizers will accept either from one side or another side. So, uh, that, that has been our historic experience, and uh, we're always uh, going this path, and uh, that, that is not necessarily something that, uh, that works. I would like uh, still insist that let's give a try and uh, let's do not spend too much time on every of those proposals but just go through them and uh, uh, see what are the arguments by those who propose those proposals and uh, after five or six we will see whether our method is sustainable or we need to re review it again. Sita, you are agreement with me, right? Yes, Chair. Uh, my name is Sita from uh, HIVOS. Um, I would like to go d directly to the proposals that I support. Um, I support proposals number 153, the freedom of expression on line gaps in policy and practice. I support these proposals because there are some stories which are very relevant for the bigger discussion in Southeast Asia region uh, regarding the implementation of freedom of expression. The plus point is that this session also has a voice from Malaysia and Pakistan. Uh, my suggestion for these workshops is to add more government representatives in the sessions. Uh, they currently have a deputy privacy commissioner from New Zealand, but I would like to recommend another, to add another government representative from Southeast Asia, though perhaps it's challenging, but possible. Uh, that that one point. Uh, the second point is actually I don't know. I did not know that we need to get support from other MAC members. But yeah, yeah. but it's it's going on. Thank you. So thank you, Sita. Uh, I will ask you to repeat everything you said at the moment we will get to, to this uh, uh, workshop proposal uh, on our list. Uh, but this is more or less what I expect from, from MAG members when they introduce the, the text. Uh, why? Uh, based on, on criteria and uh, uh, what, what's the reasoning behind it. So let us, try, uh, let us start with the uh, top. It is 171. Could you enlarge a little bit this thing? Uh, 171. Who is take who Janice? Yep. Uh, 
Yes, German, it's yours, your proposal, please. Um, I strongly support the, uh, this question 171, as this workshop uh, about IXPs are, is are critical infrastructures uh, with a direct positive impact in the concept of connected the next billion. Uh, additionally, IXPs are directly linked with building core infrastructure for de developing countries, uh, so it also helps with the development perspective. Uh, and, and furthermore, there are currently no other IXP-related sessions in the uh, workshops considered so far, so it will contribute to a variety of topics. And looking also at the list of speakers, I can confirm that they are top-class uh, speakers, and um, they also there's a good balance uh, geographically and, and gender balance in this panel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So thank you very much. Uh, any any comments on 171? Um, um, Mark, uh, Susan, Izumi, but very quickly, please. Mark, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. I support this. Uh, I also recognize its uh, strengths in terms of geodiversity and panel expertise. And uh, this has the makings of the session at the IGF on IXP related issues and intersects well with the best practice forum so uh, on on IXPs so support thank you so uh, thank you uh, Susan um, I'd, I'd just like to second what both um, Herman and Mark have said I also strongly support this uh, this workshop thank you so and that that would that would uh, balance out a uh, uh, presence of technical uh, uh, community uh, proposals on the uh, on, on the list. Uh, and anybody opposing? No. Okay. Let's let's uh, pre preliminary. Everything I say we retain. We retain preliminary. Okay. Nothing is decided until we we uh, get better understanding uh, whether whether the method is right. Uh, 207, please. Who is, who is speaking on 207? Michael. Um, this is, I think, an important one for several reasons. It uh, brings in more economists to the discussion, and we don't have a lot of economists proposing things this year nor did we last year. Um, I know people involved in this. I don't agree with their politics, and I think most of the people in the room would be more liberal than they are and want a larger government role. But I think it's clear that we need to be open to people who take a more cyber libertarian, less government intervention approach. Um, so I would strongly recommend we take this. Um, the proposer put in two proposals. This is one of the two that I, I think is, is certainly worth taking. And rejecting both, I think, would be a, a bad idea. Uh, I didn't hear which, which of the ba balancing uh, actions we would, we would have with this, uh, accepting this proposal. Oh, well, it, it, we're looking for more viewpoints. Economists are not well represented in our present program. There's also political diversity, and if you look at the political viewpoints of most of the people speaking at IGF, they tend to be more Democrats than Republicans. So it means that the, these guys are not converted yet. <laughs> they are not Swedish socialists. Uh, uh, Cheryl? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also support this proposal, um, and I would also note, I know others have said earlier that we, we could use some more um, bulking up under the internet economy theme or sub-theme, and I think that this proposal may be able to also assist with that. I thought it was well written, and I thought there was good balance, and I do think that this is a key topic that's going to feed into some of the other work that I'm doing, and so I support as well. Uh, Lynn? I, I support it as well, Chair, and specifically because it does help fill the gap on Internet economy. Thank you. Dominique? I absolutely support it, just saying because it does bring economists to the table and um, also provides uh, an outlet for a lot of the research that I don't think we've seen yet. So uh, thank you. So thank you. Can we get back on the list, to the list? Uh, 
Okay, so that is not also very far from, from the, it's 84. In uh, Maryland? No. Uh, Jack? In support as well, but with an additional comment of maybe, if possible, to get a government perspective into the, into the list, that would be great. Uh, thank you. So for the for the moment for the moment we're retaining it. Uh, let us move to the next one. Uh, Seventy. Seventy. Who is speaking? Michael. I spoke earlier on this one. Um, this is a very important topic having to do with what happens to your personal information when you die. And uh, this is a very hot topic developing in the U.S. And as social media spreads and people put more of their life online, it's going to be more important in other countries as well. And I thought it was very well. It's a brand new topic. We've never looked at this topic. So we know that this is a brand new topic. Marilyn? Thanks, uh, Marilyn Kate speaking. Uh, I found the topic interesting, but um, I'm not, I think it, it is one of those that I know you don't like to hear the word merger, Chair, but I'm going to use the word merger. I think it is one that possibly uh, could be um, merged. The issue is uh, emerging, uh, and I agree with uh, Mike on that. Um, but I, um, I, I also think the title actually, while it may be factual, Death in the Internet, um, Managing Digital uh, Legacies, I'm not sure that translates, so that probably fits in the category of a uh, more uh, informative uh, title, but I'd like to uh, be a little cautionary and see whether it fits into another, um, another, with another workshop. So thank you. There's some doubt, Efren. Okay, uh, for me, I, I think I like it, but um, when we retain it, in case we retain it, um, we should recommend that uh, they should include government speakers to this, uh, so to get a government perspective, because I'm looking at the list of um, uh, invited panelists, but uh, it will be interesting to get a government perspective on that. So thank you. German, are you in line, or you please, now it's your turn. I had my doubts. Mark, please. Thanks. Uh, well, thought provoking topic, yes. Uh, but I, I was very critical of this. Um, lacked, uh, lacked diversity of participation, and um, uh, I didn't think it was a well, well presented uh, proposal. So I've, I've, I'm in the sort of question mark category for this. Thank you. So thank you very much. There, there are some some uh, question questions raised on this particular issue. Uh, remote participant. Uh, there was just a note from uh, uh, Ginger and Subi that uh, they are against uh, merger. Good to know. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Efren. I, 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 th I thought Hossam answered the frame. My apologies. Hossam, please. Thank you, Chef. Well, uh, I just want to highlight that there is uh, uh, one workshop uh, related to the right to be forgiven, which is forgotten. forgotten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let me just remember which number, it's uh, um, uh, 142, which is, I think, like 70, uh, where is it, uh, the right to be for, um, I just uh, lost uh, count. Who did you think it was, roughly? 142, so... Yes. So it comes higher on the ranking, mm. and uh, it's the same subject, am I right? It's not related. It's related, but not exactly the same. No, it's related, though. Yeah. 
we shall propose it. So, uh, let me uh, let, let me suggest following. Uh, for the for the mo I would suggest for the moment uh, to park uh, workshop 70 uh, on maybe list. And again, nothing is decided. We just just uh, there were doubts. And uh, we, we may revisit a uh, question uh, af afterwards. Though you see that uh, workshop seven, 70 was uh, uh, relatively high graded. It's, it was uh, mathematically it came uh, uh, 75th. So, um, but um, let us let us move now to uh, to next one 160. Yanis, just a quick note. Uh, I see on the chat that uh, Subi and Ginger do support the workshop number 70. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, one of also. For 160? I think that's a winner, you know. You have security risk and sustaining sustainable development in the title. It's, it, it's a winner. When you see the uh, panelists are really top-notch panelists. And it's, it's a subject that, that well, the, the, the title says it all. It's, it's current, it's, it's pertinent for Joan Pessoa, and that's it. it it's, it's a good workshop. Uh, no doubt, I think every, every from two, 240 are very good ones. We need to select simply the best, uh, and that, that is challenge. I Once again, I would like to ask uh, proponents or those who introduce the workshops to tell to everyone uh, which imbalance, in your view, uh, this proposal address. So I see that this is intergovernmental organizations, but please state that because we are looking for, for, for proposals. Uh, we're doing this exercise to, to, to try to balance out the program, to make, to make every uh, uh, representation uh, right. So therefore, this is the criteria, not because the, the workshop is good or not good. Uh, of course, that's also important, but, but for the moment, we're looking for, for right balance. So this is, this, this would, uh, is a, a proposal from uh, intergovernmental organizations. So that is that. And technical, te technical sector. Thank you. So any, any comments on 160? Uh, Yes, please. I'm not a big fan of this proposal, but uh, since we have to balance on the intergovernmental, I think it should uh, make the cut. I'm not a big fan of what's out here. Thank you. Ephraim? Um, I'm not a big fan of uh, mergers, but I would suggest on this uh, to look at workshop 265. Uh, to find a way of uh, working between the two workshops, because I'm seeing both of them, uh, MAG members have highlighted as uh, some things we should discuss. I, I think there's a way in which the two workshops can work together because they're some discussing something similar. And yeah, thank you. Can we get on this on the screen 265? Mark. Uh, thanks. Yeah, this uh, proposal I, I support. Uh, I think for the reasons that we're uh, establishing that it uh, it's an IGO uh, proposal, well developed, um, hits on uh, IGF 10 themes. So uh, I think it merits addition. Thank you. So. Uh Thank you. Uh, any uh, any idea on proposed merger or, or suggested merger? Anna? Well, actually, I, well, when I scored this one, I, I put that it should be merged with the others that deal with the, 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 the certs and certs. 
I don't know uh, by heart which are the, the other ones, but my notes uh, say that it, it should be merged. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I see no big enthusiasm about this one, but uh, since this, this corrects, uh, uh, second, please. Since this corrects intergovernmental imbalance, most probably we need to retain for the moment. But second, please, you have the floor. If you would, if you would use microphone, because otherwise no one hears you. Okay. Yeah, I just want to provide a little comment. I think this topic should be merged with the previous one, because this has to do with uh, internet safety, which I believe will be covered under the previous one, cyber security for sustainable development. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You are suggesting that 160 should be proposed to merge with uh, uh, 265. Okay. Uh, let us then uh, uh, win. Thank you, Chair. Um, there's a number of proposals having to do with cybersecurity capacity building. And I, I like this proposal. Um, I actually had ranked one or two others higher. This might be one where at the end we want to go back through and take another look to see if we don't have a reverse gap, as in oversubscribed in a couple of areas. So I, I do like this one, but I would like to, to make sure we're not oversubscribed in a very narrow cybersecurity development role. So thank, thank you. Juan Aposo. Thank you, Chairman. I'm not against mergers. You know, I've always been uh, supporting mergers because it include uh, more people in. But I, I call the attention of my colleagues to look at this proposal, 160, and vis-a-vis the, uh, -vis the, the other ones. This one, as you can see, it's more general because it's, it, it, it addresses principles regarding cybersecurity and, and, and development. And the other ones that you're suggesting merging are more technical because our ways of doing it, the third, the, the other one, uh, 245 has Mozilla because it, it's, it's a way of implementing. It's, it's, I don't say that it's not important and if we want to merge, it merge. But it's like, you know, merging apple with an apple pie. It's already made and cooked. And here we're taking the apple from the tree. Thank you for allegories. So let, let's uh, retain for the moment this 160. Uh, and um, uh, as Lynn suggested, just to review uh, whether, um, uh, whether we, need, we need to uh, propose further mergers uh, on, on the topic. But we retain because of intergovernmental uh, proposal. So let us now go to 241, uh, which is currently ranked 87. Uh, who is introducing 241? Juan Alfonso, please. I'm sorry to take the floor again, but this is also one of my proposals. Uh, here is not only the, the topic of uh, the, the balancing part here is not because of the stakeholder, but because of the economics that, as was argued before, is an, it's one of the sub-themes that is very important and relevant and unfortunately have been absent in the global discussion regarding Internet. And as you know, the revenue streams of Internet, now with the auctions of names of languages uh, and all that, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting thing to to, to examine, uh, I, ha I, am, I, ha I have published academic works in this, and I always, and some colleagues, academics in many countries, agree that the internet economics is still in the infancy. So whatever discussion is surrounding this, I'm not against uh, merging this with some other of, of the same. As a matter of fact, there's some, some other, I think, proposal by, uh, I think it's, it's, it's Netherlands, but that is already in the 70 selected. That is, uh, it's similar because it's about uh, funding, innovative funding and so on. Uh, I'm not against merging, but I think that the topic is important. The reason for the proposal here is the topic, not the stakeholder. Although we can put governmental or intergovernmental organizations here like UNTAC or some other that has to do with financial uh, things uh, to, to, to uh, 
improve this uh, workshop. So, uh, thank you. Uh, any reactions? Uh, I, I'm looking to, to uh, distribution by sub-themes, and it seems that internet economy is in, in teams, actually. It's not uh, uh, overly underrepresented, but um, this is just statistics. Marilyn, please. Thank you, Chair. Marilyn Kate speaking. This is one that I had, um, had uh, noted as well. Um, the one uh, area that I, um, I think could strengthen it would be to use an economist, and I've noticed this, I'm just going to mention it, but I noticed that in um, several of the workshops, it's the same companies and the same uh, economist from groups. I do think this is a good workshop in that it will, uh, a worthy workshop that it will attract attention from some of the developing countries who are interested in uh, what the barriers are to, um, to growing the digital economy. Um, I agree with um, with Juan Alfonso. It could be merged. I think it's pretty robust, um, and uh, I, it has um, OECD in it uh, as well as some governments that are um, uh, not represented. Um, sorry, not confirmed. I did reach out to the organizer, who tells me he does have co he has contacted the governments, but until he knows for sure, since it involves travel funding, he has not um, he has tentative names, but they're not um, not finally confirmed. Thank you, Mark. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm in favour of this. Um, it's a, a three a very interesting three country comparison. Uh, and it uh, intersects well with the sustainable development uh, theme uh, and uh, you know, e economic aspects of it. So I think it's, it's hitting on, I think, an underrepresented thematic area of the IGF. And uh, uh, yeah, I, w I would support this. Thank you. So thank you very much. Let's then keep this for the moment, 2.41, and let's move, move to the next one. Uh, next one is uh, 200, uh, which currently is scored s uh, uh, 89. Uh, 200, I think. Well. I, I think the title itself uh, uh, merits to be retained. <laughs> so who is who's, uh, speaking uh, on this topic, please? If no one is speaking on the topic, we're not examining it. Juan Alfonso, please. I, I propose this more or less along the line of the other, but because of the of the topic. Although I recognize that I don't really uh, know the the um, um, panelist that's going to be here, but it it I think that it address one of the hot items of internet nowadays, that is taxation, and uh, when you were talking about living holes, you know, the Swiss cheese analogy, thinking of the hot items that could arrive t in November. Well, that is one of the hot items right now. I don't know if it's going to be in November. I presume that it may be uh, still in November. So um, again, it can be a candidate for merger, but uh, I, I like it. Uh, also, it's been many of the sponsors are from the host country that I would always have some positive discrimination in favor of the host country because they're already there. So, and the title is irresistible. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, please. Please, Mr. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, well, I, I will make a comment, and I'll, I'm refraining from commenting on proposals that involve Brazilian nationals. 
uh, in this case it comes from civil society, but uh, just to concur with uh, Juan that this issue is an issue of particular interest from the perspective of government. Uh, I think since we are trying also to balance governmental interests, I, I'm sure, I'm confident that this will indeed be a very uh, a, a theme that will appeal to governments. The, like others which uh, have not been included in that list that were proposed by civil society uh, uh, organizations or other institutions, not led by governments, but for example, I would refer to proposal number 135 that was ranked 83 that deals with the issue of jurisdiction, which is also something that is very much appealing to governments. So uh, I, I would uh, concur and support what Juan has said. Thank you. So thank you, Mark. Thanks. Uh, I, I have a question over this. Uh, it seems to be too far removed from global internet governance for me. Um, national taxation policies in respect of internet services uh, I, 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 I don't support it. Sorry, thank you. So thank you. We more participants. Okay. Um, so before uh, I give floor to Subi, um, I'll read just a note uh, that uh, I got from uh, Lee Kyun Han, who said that um, uh, the selection should also pay more attention on the proposals from technical communities. And uh, now, uh, Subi, you have the floor. Thank you. I, I agree with Mark's comments on this particular proposal. I also want to articulate that as a general principle, I would support whatever possible proposals from local communities, um, whether it's civil society or government, because there is a reason that we take the IGF to a new region or a new location each year. So whenever possible, let's try and also attempt to facilitate proposals from the whole country. Thank you. So thank, thank you. Uh, Anna, the last on this. Uh, thank you. So I think that the beauty of the IGF is to discuss uh, uh, very sensitive issues, and this one is very sensitive. So I think that is a very good one, and I, I, I fully endorse it. Thank you. Yeah, just a quick comment, uh, and uh, I think that issue, and uh, if we will recall that Net Mundial made a call for that particular issue regarding jurisdiction to be further addressed by the community, there is a particular call in that regard. And I think the reason for that is that although that refers not to the global internet governance, but it is at the heart of the, the tensions that permeate internet governance that there, be, there is uh, this tension between national jurisdiction and the global nature of int internet governance. So I think this is an issue that really should be further investigated. There was a rough consensus emerging from that media that indeed this is a matter for further consideration. Of course, it's up to the MEG to decide or not, but uh, the issue is on the table. It's not something new. It's not something being proposed out of the blue. It reflects a need that was perceived and is very well articulated uh, at the net mundial outcome document. So thank you. Uh, let, let us maybe then retain, but with a bit of a marker, uh, that, uh, that there were some doubts uh, expressed about this uh, uh, workshop and let us move to the next one, 35. Uh, 35, which was uh, initially scored at 90. Excuse me, Yanis. Just a quick note that uh, Subi on the chat said that she would like to revise her comment and that she supports the previous proposal. Thank you. So, uh, proposal 35. Who is speaking on this? Local infrastructure is local development. Private sector. Who is speaking in favor of this? Holman Foster. 
I'm sorry to take the floor again because I uh, propose uh, this one. Uh, it's the same. It's it's about the economics and local development. That is one of the key issues of this uh, sustainable sustainable development. Even the post 2015 uh, development agenda, local development, and also uh, the. Uh, um, presenters are a very uh, high rank and from a, a broad uh, um, fan of, of institutions and, and opinions and uh, that's why I suggest, but I'm not so uh, in, in heatly defending this like the one before is because I recognize there's no government there, so maybe if it can be improved with some government, but if it doesn't pass, it's okay. So thank you. Uh, if presenter s says it doesn't pass, it's okay, then it most probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> right? At least not on this list for the moment. So that's why I would, I would suggest to, uh, to put it aside uh, on, uh, on the second list that we uh, constituted. Maybe list. One hundred eighty-nine, currently scored ninety-five. Who is speaking in favor and explaining the reasons? Also. I'm sorry, I, I again propose this, uh, not only because it's the Americas, it's some government there, it, it's one that was proposed uh, for merging, and uh, it's a government, and it's uh, the, the panelists are mainly from, for government, all of them, and uh, it's, a, it's a topic of interest. I know that last year it has a best uh, practice uh, forum on this, no? Maybe, I don't know if to repeat it again or, or if it's interact, I, I leave it to you. Thank you, thank you. Other, other interventions, Mark? Thanks. Uh, just on that uh, last point, um, uh, this is uh, an overlap with the best practice forum. So, um, and if we are, you know, agonising over additional um, substantive workshop proposals, I think we ought to bear that in mind and perhaps uh, put this in the category of. A, an input into the best practice forum, perhaps as a, uh, a side event, uh, on regional cooperation of, uh, of certs. So that's my suggestion. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Seng Dong? I think uh, it is a, a good proposal. Uh, so the experience uh, from government in, in the region will be some very good experience, which can be learned for other regions. So I think it's, uh, it's also f from the uh, government stakeholders. So I think it, it, it's nice to consider that. So thank you. Uh, Susan? Hi. Um, I, I hope I'm not as stopped from saying something about the previous one, number 89. I may have lost my chance. But um, I really do think it would be a good workshop, more than a maybe, I think. Um, on the local data center development because there are new faces and I think it's I think it's really important issue building local infrastructure so Susan please follow, follow the, the uh, sort of uh, theme otherwise we're, we'll be jumping but um, uh, your, your, your intervention is noted and that was on the previous on the previous uh, workshop uh, Marilyn 
Thank you, Marilyn Kate speaking. Um, I support the idea of making this uh, a feeder into um, the best practice form. There's a, another workshop uh, also on IXPs that is, um, I think, 123 that we probably won't get to. And I think those that are uh, so specific, but very, they're very informative, but they're also specific uh, to regional, could be really good um, feeders into the best practice form. So I would support that suggestion. Uh, Michael? I wanted to support the idea of making this part of the best practices forum, but also um, asking about posters, because this is a topic that I think would be one that if they had a poster and some of the panelists were willing to spend a few hours at the poster, you'd have some very helpful discussions with other governments who are facing similar problems, and it might be even more effective in reaching the target audience than doing a panel discussion because people could have one-on-one -on -one consultations and share lessons. Are, are posters available for free for people who we don't um, approve as speakers? Or what, what's the financial arrangement if someone wants to have a, a display to share their insights? Uh, we've had poster sessions before, but then um, would have to speak to the host country if they're amenable to provide poster stands. Um, and it depends how many poster sessions do you want. I mean, we just have to look into the logistics of it. This is often, I've, d I've run lots of academic conferences, and often the consolation prize is a poster, yes. which people can often find more useful than doing a presentation, particularly if they are in an awkward presentation time opposite some really popular session. Thank you. Lynn? Yes, thank you, Chair. I'd just like to come in on Michael's uh, request to support posters. They are extremely um, useful as well, and it could be a, a good way to get further, deeper engagement on a few topics. So th thank you. Marcus, what do you think, whether that would be a feeder or, or part of the best practice discussion? Uh, we definitely could get in touch with them and build it in into the best practice forum as case studies has been seen as one possible priority for us. So let us get in touch with them and see how we can incorporate them. So thank you very much. With that, maybe we can park this uh, uh, proposal uh, and propose that this be becomes par part of the best practice, potentially, and do uh, uh, explore possibility of having poster session on this. Uh, remote participants? Uh, uh, Subi and Peter Dengin Trash also support this. Uh, my proposal. Thank you. Yeah, regarding the posters. Uh, proposal 64. Who is speaking in favor of 64? Currently on 101 rank. No one is speaking on this? I see Im immediately that there's, uh, this would not, not really balance anything. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, suggest not to retain this. Objections? I see no objections. So 141. Who is speaking on 141? Michael. Uh, I mentioned yesterday uh, how important this topic of uh, encryption is. This is right to the heart of the issue, which is will encryption make 
the job of law enforcement much more difficult and is there a need to have weaker encryption. Um, this is not a debate that will go away. I was personally very involved in this issue at the White House 20 years ago. Uh, what was very impressive about this proposal was they were bringing in people who uh, are not typically attending IGF. They had confirmed speakers from law enforcement and um, uh, I, I just, I, I proposed yesterday that we consider doing encryption as a main session. Uh, this one could be combined with another encryption session and be a main session, but I think this one is unique. It has new people, new topics, and um, again, um, the issue is only going to get more, more uh, attention in the next few months. So thank you. It's also from technical community and the represented Flavia, please. Uh, there are some other proposals on encryption, and there, there were uh, in the comments from from the evaluations there are some proposals for merging for with other with other workshops. So thank thank you, Mark. Thanks. I think this has merit as uh, as a cross community. The balance I think is important. So uh, if um, the law enforcement agencies are confirmed, yes, certainly. Thank you. So I, maybe we, c we could uh, retain it uh, with, the, with the potential of merger with others on, on encryption and similar, similar topic uh, we, we retain for the moment. So 228, who is speaking? Hannes, could you please uh, have a remote participant for the previous one? Y yes, please. Okay, uh, Serbia, you have the floor. I completely support Mike's intervention on this uh, workshop. I do believe that it's a very good proposal and it's extremely difficult to get people from law enforcement to come in. On this perspective, it's also an important issue which will still need a lot of work. So I very strongly ask you to participate. And thank you for reaching. Uh, I understand you were talking about 141. Can you confirm, please? So we. Thank, thank you. 228. Who is speaking on 228? Lynn, please. Um, I'd like to support um, this proposal going forward and also look at a potential merge with 208. Um, the title of that one is The Woman's Role in the Internet Governance Over the Years. And in light of um, our themes and desire to get uh, greater participation, I think this is an important topic. Uh, Mark? Yes, uh, merged with 208. There was consensus in, in the comments about that. So. That's the best approach for this one, I think. Thank you. Uh, Jack? Um, yeah, I think um, uh, um, it's an important topic, but I would suggest that maybe the, um, the workshop proposal get in touch with the Gender Dynamic Coalition um, to work on strengthening the proposal a little bit more, considering the, the topic. Um, and to, to it was... Um, I, on principle, I really want to support it, but it felt quite quite weirdly written by one person, and it wasn't really sure whether um, the 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 participants were being identified or not, or whether it was simply just a name sort of picked out. But but maybe if they can have a conversation to mutually strengthen each other's um, um, proposal, working together with DC, it might work. So thank you. Two oh eight. Do we have uh, retained two oh eight? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, honestly, looking looking to uh, to proposal, though I, I acknowledge the importance of the theme, uh, I, I do not see how this would uh, provide additional balance. Uh, 
and on that on that grounds, I would like to put it on um, a second list. Lynn? I'm just looking for clarity as to whether you're proposing 228 or 208 or both go to a second list, because we were discussing 228. I'll also point out that 228 and 208 have a high degree of overlap in panelists, so it should be a relatively easy merger if we decide to do that. Now we're examining uh, uh, 228. And again, uh, we, we're doing this exercise uh, with one thing in mind, not to, uh, to, to bring uh, or decide whether that is a good or, or bad workshop. All, all proposals are good. What we're trying to do is to balance identified imbalances. And honestly, I do not see that this would uh, uh, contribute to uh, sort of balancing uh, exercise. Jack? Um, for 228, if the proposal organizers were intending to work with national and regional IGF organizers, then in that way I think it will address some of the key um, imbalances that we, that we were thinking of, namely to bring in more national and regional perspectives. But, um, but it's not clear how, uh, but maybe that's the, the question or direction in which you will ask. So thank you, uh, Marilyn. So I want to uh, note that I'm uh, listed as a co-moderator. This is a focus on data gathering from national and regional IGFs. As you see in the write-up, that there's an intent to do a questionnaire about um, um, participation of women uh, in leadership positions at the national and regional IGFs. I suppose there's another way to approach this. Um, and that is to think about it uh, encouraging participation in the interregional dialogue of the national and regional IGFs. Uh, Juan Alfonso. No, just to uh, point out to the Secretariat that there are over six workshop proposals that deal with this uh, topic, not only 228, but 208, also 196, 144, 107, 59, and 20. Uh, this is the second uh, cluster of workshop behind youth and child issues. I, I, I also I always uh, said that this is a candidate for one of the many main uh, sessions because of the well popularity, if we can s s uh, speak it like that. So I only want you to take note of that. So thank you. I would I would suggest that we we uh, for the moment put it on um, uh, list two, maybe list, and uh, move move to the next one. Uh, there is a there is a note from Ginger on chat. Um, she said uh, I support two to eight with help from the gender coalition and perhaps inviting collaboration from two o eight, but two o eight not on any lists. So thank you. Uh, I, th I think also uh, the dyna not, dyna not dynamic coalition, but um, the best practice uh, forum might uh, on on gender. Uh, may, may consider uh, sort of no, sorry, I'm, I'm withdrawing my, my my proposal. No further comments. Let us let us move to the next agenda, uh, next next item. Uh, one one three four. One, three, four. Who is speaking on that? Juan Alfonso. Uh, Alfonso. I think that one of the good things of IGF is plurality of opinions and diversity of participants. Uh, this 134, as you can see, of, is about a new initiative that is the Internet Social Forum and taking into consideration that the World Social Forum, as a, as a general, as a parent uh, movement, was born in Latin America, in, in especially even in, in Brazil, and it has, throughout 
the years has been very important for the grassroots civil society movements in Latin America. And taking the thing that I think the IGF should be open to different viewpoints, I think it's important to give a space to, to this uh, organization. I realize that maybe uh, uh, they will have logistics because the organizations that support this are not well funded, but in any case, it should not be us, the one who shut the door to, to this uh, initiative. So, thank, thank you. Uh, you didn't mention uh, anything that would uh, uh, go towards our goal to balance things. Uh, Mark, please. Thanks, yes. I mean, exactly that point. I don't see how this will uh, c um, contribute to uh, filling any uh, gap in, in balance. Uh, I think this is an interesting initiative that uh, does deserve some um, uh, visibility, if you like, but uh, not a 90-minute workshop, in my view, uh, perhaps um, a flash session approach or something like that. But it, it's not serving, as you say, our objective here now. Thank you. So thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn Kate. I was going to propose a flash session or a poster session uh, where people uh, would be able to seek out the organizers and spend time dialoguing with them. So thank you. Uh, I would propose not to retain, uh, but propose uh, if we, we will have uh, poster, poster opportunities that uh, organizers would have this uh, uh, opportunity if they wish so. Uh, please. Uh, chairman, uh, the balance, we need to balance, the more important thing that we need to balance in IGF is we viewpoints. And we should not lift IGF because the stakeholder categories, it's, it's secondary compared, I don't, I don't, uh, it's more important to have different viewpoints that even geographical, for instance, it's, it's not the same, it's, it's not important to have somebody from developing country if it represents the elites or the rich persons in developing country. I think that the most balanced, balancing that we need to do in internet governance, and by the way, is one of the criticism that, that uh, the, the working group for the improvement of internet government uh, um, pointed out is that it should encourage the diversity of view, not to be captured with one uh, general concept of the internet. So I, I think that this is an important balance to, to be to be done. So and this is not for a poster. Maybe as has been suggested, a 30 minute session, but give them the space. Otherwise, we are being uh, exclusive for ideological reasons. Uh, there is a there is a note from uh, Peter and uh, Subi supporting uh, a flash session or a poster for this, uh, and uh, there is also a request for floor from Subi. So, uh, please, so Subi, Subi, go ahead. please go ahead. understand anything. Uh, would, would, would Secretariat make sure that we have a, a better sound quality? Uh, yes, Subi was breaking up. Uh, we couldn't hear you. Uh, could you please uh, perhaps send it uh, on the chat and uh, I will uh, then read it out loud. Okay? So thank you. Uh, Michael? Uh, I only nominated a handful of sessions that I thought we needed to consider and this was not one of them. But I did give it a five, even though I'm probably not going to go to it and my politics are not the same as these people's politics. But I think it's a useful new format. Uh, I do think we should think about the politics here a little bit because this is a group that might very well make 
a big stink and like we had in, in, uh, in Istanbul where you know, since we didn't s take some proposals, people went out and created their own alternative IGF. Um, this group is a grassroots group. Why don't we foster it? Uh, I don't think it needs 90 minutes, but uh, I think we could call it an open forum and I suspect if we had called it an open forum, there would have been a lot of support for it. I think the lower ranking was probably because it was not seen as very diverse, either geographically or ideologically, but open forums don't have to meet that criteria. The other thing that I would suggest is that you, whatever you, you if we do accept it, schedule it at the end of the day so people can have their meeting and then go off and continue the discussion, because that's the kind of thing they're trying to foster here. They're trying to get a, a community organized to do something, and uh, that often requires a, a, a trip to the bar. So thank you. Uh, with, with the, I, I'm not buying argument with a stink, because uh, one, may, may, one group may do a stink, but uh, there are uh, 140 other groups that may also do the stink, and then the smell will be much, much stronger. My, my, it was just, again, to, to say, if we don't welcome all, if we're not perceived as welcoming all political perspectives, we, we, we are not doing our job. And we, we failed to do that in Istanbul, uh, and I think this is an example of if we think these people are too far away from the mainstream and we exclude them, they'll have a good, they'll, they'll make a good argument. Okay, thank you. Uh, more interventions, Susan? Um, with the exception of um, <coughs> the open forum part of Michael's intervention, um, I do agree in principle uh, with what he says. Thank you. Uh, any, any other opinions? Uh, I simply I don't feel the, the temperature in the room on this. Uh, I do not want to uh, stand, stand uh, uh, against it, but I, I, f I feel that uh, this does not respond uh, to the objective that we're trying to achieve, to balance. Now I hear arguments that there might be also uh, alternative opinion, that might be an argument. I need to hear your opinion. Please. Uh, Subi said the uh, uh, flash session of a poster. It's a valid criticism, just not acceptable here. And we really have done our utmost to strive for diversity and plurality. I agree with the chair, but we refuse to be held to ransom either. Marilyn, please. Thank you. Um, my, I gave this a very low rating, but not because I disagree with anyone's political position, but I did not feel that it really um, added to the entirety of the program. I can support giving it a flash session, um, and all are welcome to come to the IGF. So I think it's not really fair, but not everybody is going to be able to hold a workshop or be in a main session. I think we have to recognize that our principle of openness and inclusiveness is about being able to attend and participate. Many of the participation opportunities are from the floor. They're not necessarily a right to run a workshop. Um, secondly, I would just say, Chair, that I really support your point of view. I don't think it's fair for any group to say if we are not given a speaking slot, we're going to protest. Otherwise, we would have all of us protesting. So thank you, Mark. Thanks. I, uh, my sense of the room here is that is not to oppose the opportunity for this uh, group. Uh, so um, I mean, is there a consensus here of a, of a, a short session, you know, 30 minutes flash, uh, as the solution for this uh, discussion, we're resolving this discussion we're having now? Thank you. So thank you. Two last interventions, uh, Lynn and then Jack. I'd like to um, echo um, Marilyn's comments as well. And perhaps we could actually have a flash or a boff. That's the other sort of session that's ideal for this. But whatever we go back with, whether it's a no, a flash, a boff, or something else, I think if we can stress Marilyn's points about the inclusiveness and participation, and we do welcome diversity of views, and they need to be spread throughout the program as well. So I think if we can make those points back, I'd support any one of those decisions. So thank you, Jack. Um, I actually went this 
um, quite high, not not super high, but quite high. Um, and I'm, I think it's one of um, you know, it's it's one, it's it's quite an important initiative that came up this year. That sort of maybe they are really trying to. It's similar to many other sort of important projects that people want to bring to the IGF um, in order to share with the broader community. Um, sort of bring, and I looked at it in a similar way. Um, and in terms of the stakeholder groups, it also seemed to be quite a nice mix between technical community and government speakers as well as members of the of civil society. So I'm not quite sure where the imbalance is as well. Um, but saying that, I, uh, that, from the comments, it seems to be lacking in clarity in terms of actually what is this workshop session trying to achieve. If it is trying to be an outreach session, how is it aiming to do that? And maybe 90 minutes outreach session without more information is not going to work very well. So I would support uh, maybe a proposal in changing of format. Um, and um, on another similar note, in terms of organizing parallel sessions or parallel, work sh uh, parallel IGFs, I suppose, um, in order to be able to hold um, conversations and discussions that may not fall into the formal internet governance forum process, I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, I think it should be encouraged. I think alternative um, spaces that is being organized in, in parallel to IGFs is actually a good thing and an indicator of um, how important um, this space actually is in order to bring different um, groups of people together to have conversations around the topic. So thank you very much. Um, uh, not because uh, I'm afraid of uh, alternative opinion, but because Mag uh, thinks that uh, there is some merit of uh, uh, retaining it for the moment, uh, but not as a full session, but as a flash session, a short one, at the end of the day, uh, that people then can go and uh, have a drink afterwards, as it was put by some. Uh, one mag member. So we would retain it for the moment. Uh, I would personally uh, not go that way, but uh, if that's the wish, then we can do it. And then please uh, go to the next, uh, next uh, uh, proposal. I think this time it is not accurate reflection what I said. I said retained as a flash session, not proposed to go to a flash session. Two sixty three. Who is speaking on two sixty three? speaking on 263. Uh, Juan Alfonso. I thought that 216 was before 263, but anyway, uh, in, in, the, in the list, can you put the list again? It's 216, the one we have to look now, no? Because uh, yes, retain, you, you have a wrong. Yeah. Yes, sorry, I I, uh, I made a mistake. So uh, we're talking. Get back to two uh, two sixteen, then. No, because retain and a flash session is one thirty four. I think you you missed. Uh, yes, it, uh, there's a my, my apologies. We're now talking about uh, two sixteen. Why not? 216. Oh, now 216. Okay. My apologies. Okay. So, so I, I propose 216 because it really balances governments, uh, mainly uh, the panelists, also civil society, but also governments, and it's also a topic of the the topics that are. Um, you know, economics and development, that is one of the most interesting uh, thing for, for governments. And this really balance. You can see the, the panelists that are mainly uh, government. 
I would seek opinion of others. I, I, uh, I have a feeling that we're overemphasizing in this exercise uh, economic issues here, creating another imbalance. Uh, but that's my, my feeling. I don't. Uh, please. Who wants to speak on this topic? Michael, please. I just wanted to comment on the, the, the fact was that a number of the economics related topics were just below the cutoff or you know in the, in the, the zone that we did not select. There weren't a lot in the top in the top 470. so it's, we're not overemphasizing we're if anything making up for that gap. But I'm not going to speak out on this one. So and what's the opinion on 216? Lynn? There are a number of proposals that deal with zero rating in the course of them, and I was trying to look quickly to see if we had covered that in, in, um, in any aspect. That is a pretty topical conversation at the moment. Maybe there's an opportunity to merge the other three or four that um, also focus on this into a proposal. But I don't have anything concrete to add because I was trying to <laughs> run through everything. Please keep, keep looking. Uh, we will be uh, a few minutes on this topic. Giacomo, please. Yes, this is, this is exactly one of the topics I was suggesting for March. There are four, um, four different um, workshops on the same topic. One has been retained, is uh, number uh, 156, and there are other three that have, uh, are not retained. I feel that um, in, according to the various angle, uh, I feel it very easily to merge all of them. So my suggestion is for this, as for uh, number 79, as for um, uh, 156, no, 156 is in, for 204 and 206 to, to be merged all together. So thank you. I think maybe that is a sensible proposal. Subi agrees on the merger. Uh, so we do not retain as, as a separate uh, proposal, but we uh, suggest uh, to 156 organizers uh, consider merger with, with others on, on similar topic. That is decided. 263 then. Juan Alfonso. Well, 263. Sorry, 263 is uh, governmental organization there. Uh, ECLAC is, you know, it's a key economic uh, commission of, of United Nations and it's been very active in Latin America in economic issues and ratings and I think that the topic is uh, very relevant being held in Latin America, this IGF, and I think it could contribute uh, for balance. Question to Secretariat, if that is ECLAC, why it is uh, uh, mentioned as a, a private sector initiative? So while Secretariat is looking for answer, uh, any, anyone speaking in favor against this proposal? Maryland. ECLAC is a um, is a, a governmental group, and um, so uh, I'm. I don't know. I did not notice that it was um, labeled as private sector. Um, the interesting thing about um, all of the regional organizations are that they bring together. And in this case, they should be able to bring together a different set of uh, government level officials, um, a different level is the wrong word, a different, um, different ministries than uh, usually attend. So I'd like us to at least consider how it fits. It is in the region. Um, um, that is, it, it, the ECLAC is uh, from the region we are in, and that may be attractive for that reason. Um, that some of the economic ministries would be able to join us. So, uh, any other any other reactions? Personally, I see. Uh, 
that this does not add or does not meet the, the criteria for our exercise. Uh, and I would seek uh, further comments from the MAG. Uh, please. Makan Fawi ECA. Well, ECLAG is a sister organization, but uh, the proposal I've seen it is from the private sector, and uh, ECLAG uh, is sending one person as a uh, speaker. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I also I don't see ECLAC uh, as an organizer. Uh, that is that is a, a group uh, which self-identify itself as as a private sector, and um, so. Please, please. Uh, I don't know how many of you were last ten days in the CSTD session. I think some that were here. Uh, in this. At workshops, we're going to be fortunate to have one of the leading world experts in in internet in the impact in economy of internet. That is Raúl Katz, professor from uh, is Argentinian for origin, but is from the University of Columbia in in New York, and also this work it goes very well with what. ECLAC is doing with the project ELAC 2015, now it's been changed to ELAC 2018. That is the governmental plan, I hear somebody could speak about this, the Brazilians are about, that is the regional project for um, uh, use of, of, of ICTs and internet in economy. Also, and that is confirmed, the participation. Also, it's confirmed the participation for the uh, uh, Andinian, Andinian Corporate of Fomento, SCAF. It's also an intergovernment uh, uh, investment um, organization of Andinian countries. So I, I, you were asking for high-level uh, government uh, participation, and this <laughs> that also relates to Latin America, and, and also it has um, a top-notch uh, panelist. You know, even the, the, the best in the world at the moment, you can Google Raul Katz, and if you really are interested in internet economy, and, and, and so find his, his thank you. So uh, I don't say, uh, to have the conclusion that this is not relevant, I think that we should think a little bit more about this. Uh, Juan Afonso, if we would not have any limitations, we would be happy to provide opportunity for 240 workshops to take place. Yes, I, I, I happily repeat. Uh, if we would not have any limitations, we would provide opportunity for 240 workshops to take place. But we do have. And here we're doing a balancing act. Uh, this uh, this co uh, proposal was scored uh, relatively low. It's in the middle, 100... Um, 151 out of 240. So we have limitations for 100, uh, 100 workshops. Uh, I, I do not see what uh, of the balancing things we're talking about this would address if we would retain it. So therefore, it should be scored on, on the merits of the of the ranking. So this is this is my uh, my, my uh, position, and I seek. Uh, opinion of other MAG members because I heard only one and uh, I do not want to uh, uh, make any uh, ruling without having opinion of the group. Mark and then remote participant. Thank you, Chair. This, this was a bit tricky to uh, evaluate actually in my view. Um, it provides a valuable regional perspective. Um, an evidence base on ICT's contribution to sustainable development. But it's a regional, a wholly regional um, proposal. So it was scored down for lack of geodiversity. So I think that's the reason why the scoring was kind of placing it in the middle, middle area. I, I'm sort of edging towards support because it does provide that important regional perspective on uh, on sustainable development which is a key IGF uh, theme 
and uh, it, maybe if they brought in one or two external panelists uh, to sort of reflect on the regional perspective, that would certainly enhance it in, in terms of scoring, I think. So it's a bit, bit, bit of a tricky one to determine the future of, I have to say, but I, I've, I, I'm sort of going in favour of it. Thank you. So thank you, Wim. Apologies for taking the floor so often, but trying to help get you some input. Um, I actually scored it quite high um, as well, while noting that it obviously lacks diversity. I scored it quite high because I think we should expect that when we hold conferences such as this in a region, that there are going to be regional groups and efforts that um, want to both get um, more global visibility, and frankly, it's a good opportunity for them to build their own networking in region, which is something I think we want to support as well. So as I, I actually ranked it quite high um, while noting that it did lack diversity, but I also couldn't think of any concrete way to bring the diversity in without changing it fairly substantially. So thank you. We're more participants. Um, Subi said that uh, she doesn't support its inclusion. It lacks diversity and doesn't add to the uh, present exercise for balance. Uh, Professor Katz is hugely respected, but this does not make for a workshop. So thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have uh, yesterday mentioned that I wanted to work with others on putting together a main session on um, that was uh, related to our theme, sustainable development. Um, I understand the concerns raised by colleagues. Um, I think there are aspects to this workshop that uh, have merit. I. I think it is a candidate for merger or incorporation into uh, an existing um, workshop uh, as it is incomplete in some ways. So I'd like to park it for now with fate undetermined, but, but not just reject it out hand. So thank you. Then maybe we could retain it on, on list number two as maybe. And then uh, we, we can revisit it uh, once we will see the global picture. Uh, Juan Alfonso, please. Uh, Chairman, well, I'm, I'm not going to defend this uh, workshop anymore, but I'm worried that we're moving the standards of the inclusion of this uh, last, uh, uh, well, this, uh, this proposal on this list, because we have included some other workshops just because they have government participation, and this that has government participation, and also has brilliant other uh, world-class panelists confirm, then we're not accepting. So we, I think we're having different standards. We should revisit some of the earlier that we accepted that uh, uh, we are sitting with a criteria flimsy like this, maybe because it's the effect of piling up. But I, I think that if, if as time goes, we begin to change our criteria, then, then this, this is not a serious way of, of doing it. Please, the, we accepted some other because government participation, and here at least there are two government participation, and as was mentioned, by high level, uh, all that is uh, also that they say that they're going to reach to other governments to participate. I'm sure that many other governments that have very good relationships with ECLAC will happily participate in this. The government of Colombia, maybe the government of Brazil that are, are asking, or maybe even, well, if they want, maybe our government can send a representative here. There. Uh, I uh, I would like to uh, very strongly reject what you just said. We're not changing criteria. This exercise is to not to uh, bring uh, one or another workshop up, up but to uh, do it with, uh, uh, with the balancing uh, objective in mind. Um, this workshop was scored uh, relatively low in the middle. There were a number of people uh, speaking in favor. There was a number of people, uh, people speaking uh, against. Uh, this, uh, that's why we're saying let's put it on, on uh, maybe list. Uh, 
because this does not meet criteria as we established for this exercise. That is point number one. Point number two is uh, we have examined about 20 proposals and uh, another 30 is to go. And uh, we, we, uh, may, we need to be much more selective and strict in applying criteria for this exercise to balance out uh, un, uh, unbalance. Otherwise, we would take 100 uh, highest scored proposals, and that's it. That would be pure mathematical exchange. I don't want to go that route, and that's why I would like to ask your flexibility and see uh, how far we can get with this exercise. Thank you for understanding. Uh, Yes. Propos proposal, proposal 19. No, this is this is our. Okay. On, on this on this topic is our proposal 19. Okay. Then just uh, one uh, kind request uh, that you uh, for whole also not to speak so loudly over the mic. This is from a remote participants. So. Thank you. I will keep that in mind. Uh, proposal 19, please. So who would like to speak in favor of uh, this proposal 8? Lynn? Um, I actually ranked this one quite low because I think it's very specific, but I think it could be merged quite easily with uh, workshop number 94. And I actually think the, the notion of um, internationalization, whether it's IDMs or multilingualism, um, endangered languages, does support our theme of inclusiveness and diversity. So I would support it. Thank you. Opinions? I, uh, you, you did not uh, say whether, whether uh, and on what criteria we're talking about. Diversity is sufficiently represented or is not? I actually didn't put this on the list. I was simply trying to get the discussion going. Um, if it fits the theme, it, sub theme, it fits under its inclusiveness and diversity, but frankly, I'm having a hard time tracking what's overrepresented or so underrepresented. Thank you. Now. Though it means that if no one defends it, it, is, it was put on the list by mistake. No, Susan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I didn't put it on the list, but I would just like to raise a point which can be taken or dispensed with. If, um, but I th if it's the only workshop on IDNs, I think that in terms of balance, it might be useful to include a um, thematic balance. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, question to Secretariat. Is this the only uh, proposal on IDNs? Uh, in, in terms of methodology, we, we uh, agreed that uh, MAG members will be prepared to speak uh, for the proposals they put forward. If there is no MAG member speaking uh, about proposal which is put forward, so then we are not examining that proposal. Because we need to know the reasoning, we need to understand the reasoning, and not to invent the reasoning. Those who put forward proposal should speak about it, please. Yes, I just suggested this when you ask at the beginning, but now I don't know, if you, to, because they have intergovernmental organizations among the uh, sponsors there. Somebody from UNESCO is confirmed to be there, also from the European Commission is going to be there, and that is why I, I place it there, also because of the topic, but mainly because there are two intergovernmental organizations uh, present that is going to be panelists there that, that are confirmed. That was the reason why I included. If you don't want to include it, okay. <laughs> Did it speak low enough? So, thank you. Uh, Michael? Then Mark. Uh, um, this is a rare occasion where I don't agree with one. Um, 
I think that uh, this is a topic we've covered a lot in previous IGFs, and there are two other panels that touch on linguistic diversity, uh, so I don't think we need to include this one. It, we could talk to the other panels that have, been a, that have more support and not require a merger, but indicate that there are some other interests, other panelists who might be able to join their panel. Thank you. Mark? Yes, I agree with that uh, last intervention. Uh, the only other point I would add is that uh, there is a, uh, as it's up on the screen, uh, the report by URID and UNESCO. Um, maybe that could be um, the, the topic of a flash session or, or you know, to give some visibility to that report, which would be valuable. Um, but I, I don't see the balance question here um, and for, the, for the reasons uh, just uh, described. Thank you. So thank you. Um, let, me, let me suggest that uh, we, we propose uh, a, a poster, poster opportunity uh, for, for, this, for this proposal because that, that is um, not supported by uh, majority that does not contribute to exercise we do. It was scored as it was, and though uh, the report of um, URID uh, and UNESCO was started when I was in, at UNESCO, we started together with a uh, hurting heart. I, I make this uh, proposal and, and um, propose to move on. I see no objections. We're proposing a, a, a poster session for this uh, report. 40, 45. Who is speaking in favor of 45 and explaining the reasons why we're looking at it? Speaking in favor? Juan Raposo. Chairman, I check in because I have 45 here in my list, but I don't f recall. No, it's what may be my mistake. So thank you. We do not retain this for the moment. Uh, we move on. Fifty-six. Who will speak in favor? and explain the reasoning behind it. Nobody? So if no one speaks, then we can move on. I, I, this is my list. I put it because somebody said that also the technical community was underrepresented and it has some technical uh, community from Asia, China, and some other countries. That, and that's why I put it. Not, I'm not defending it for anything special, just for that reason. So thank you very much. Virat? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to clarify for the nth time the technical community is not underrepresented. They are the single, sing, second largest sector. I know that impression has gone on since morning. They're the second largest stakeholder after the civil society. We should be careful. We should certainly bring up governments and, and IGOs, but the technical community, uh, it seems, has taken good care of themselves. So thank you. Then I propose to move on. Sangong. Please. 
Uh, this proposal is from China, but uh, I'm also from China, but, but I think I just this week uh, as a MAC member. So I, I think even this uh, proposal is from civil society, but you, you know that the penalty states from the technical community and pr private sector. So, so I think it's, uh, I, I think that even the, the uh, mobile payment and, and you know, uh, is uh, is a very uh, hot topic in, in, in China. I think they can bring some new ideas and new information uh, to this forum. Thank you. So thank you, Mark. Yes, yeah, very much in a similar vein, really. If this is, from memory, a unique proposal on mobile banking, um, and and uh, you know, it's it's criticality for the digital economy. Uh, and we've seen the impact in um, in Africa um, of uh, M-Pesa and things like that, which the proposal lacked, I think, um, um, participation uh, from sub-Saharan Africa, which was so it was a that was a deficiency. But uh, you know, I, I I I value the merit of the I, I recognise the merit of the proposal and. Uh, and, and it's addressing um, an important aspect of the internet economy, which the IGF would be, um, I think, d deficient in, in not covering. So I, I see a balance issue there. Thank you. So thank you, Virat. Shimon, I was going to just recommend, should, should we take a two-minute break, hold off, just check the ones that have made it uh, for sure, and see if they cover sufficient number of government and I just, just a rough number to know where we stand at this time. Are we at the halfway mark? Well, uh, you know, will we have 50? I, I don't know how many we've covered. I can't tell right uh, now. Neither, neither me. I'm trying to, to uh, ask and second. Just to check if we have, um, if we've got enough governments and IGOs in, or is that still an area that we need to now look at in the remaining, or do you think it's worth just going on? Okay, let me, let me uh, in make an inquiry, but please do not leave the room, because if we break, uh, then uh, we are in trouble. And moreover, there will be, um, uh, you requested yesterday uh, more information about um, uh, this deliberate polling. And uh, we are trying to arrange a very brief session, uh, 10 minutes to 6, uh, re re remotely from, from Stanford that uh, we have an opportunity to listen briefly what, what this uh, initiative is about and uh, uh, why, uh, why um, uh, they are chosen to uh, ask him to, to uh, do it during IGF. While Secretariat is counting, please, uh, Michael, go ahead. Uh, I think that uh, mobile money is an incredibly important topic, and I care passionately about cybersecurity. I just don't think this proposal is the one that we want to support this year. Um, I'm involved with the DC chapter of the Internet Society. We're doing a session in two weeks on digital money because it's a very important topic. But again, I don't think that as structured, this is a very strong proposal. And when you look at the rankings, there was a grand total of one person who thought this was a five. So there seems to be broad consensus that this is not the strongest proposal. And I would hate to have a great proposal next year that we decide not to do because we covered it this year with a proposal that's not as strong. So thank you. Izumi. It's me speaking. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm very much in line with um, what Mark has ex expressed, and I think this is a, a very good topic to cover. Well, I really don't know the speakers too well, so it's a little bit difficult to to judge on my side to judge the quality of the um, of this uh, workshop um, um, in, in in this topic. But I do have a favorable opinion about covering a workshop on this topic. So thank you very much. I, I think that we're, I see that we're split on, on this uh, particular question. Uh, maybe uh, while I'm asking, asking also to get one of those candies that are now uh, distributed in the room, uh, uh, I, would, I would ask uh, Sita to help me with the conclusion. Chair, uh, thank you. I just would like to make a clarification that uh, this, this uh, proposal has uh, submitted like five proposals to the to MAC. So it's not 
based on diversity is not really supporting. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much. Um, let me let me suggest that uh, we would uh, park for the moment this proposal uh, on maybe list and see what uh, where we are now uh, with the balancing balancing act. Chingatek, are you able to tell us now something? Yeah, if those numbers were correct, actually, the one through sixteen. Microphone We've gone through 16. We've retained eight. Um, for those left that uh, we have to go through, that more than two MAG members um, commented on is six. Six, and then where one or more, where one MAG member has commented on, it's 34. 28, that's remaining. 28, that's remaining. That's where one MAG member has commented on. So maybe we could make it. Uh, Vera, please. May I ask of the eight uh, that we have said yes to, how many are government or intergovernment? Could we know that? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We can move on. And, and also, if we could, you know, how many of them were within the 100 anyway? Uh, first four were in 80, in top 80. I, d I, don't, I don't have information which is the next, next um, we need to look at. Thirty one, Mr. Chairman. So we are effectively at seventy eight now. I'm trying to understand where we're. Could you could you increase the f the picture? We have 78 in total. Yes, we have agreed on eight this afternoon. Uh, no, what is the next one? We haven't agreed on. on from intergovernmental organizations and three from civil society. So let us let us go to 131 now. Uh, 
131. Who will be uh, introducing and explaining the proposal? Juan Alfonso. Chairman, again, I propose this because it's a purely intergovernmental uh, workshop. It's, as, as you can read, with a proposal and how it's going to be carried out, it's a Commonwealth uh, uh, organization that they, they, they are going to, to do some sort of briefing with the member countries. And that is why I so suggest it. I don't know the participants, but it's a purely intergovernmental uh, workshop. That's why I put it in the list, because you ask us to do that. I try to follow your instructions Thank the you best very much. that I can. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark. Thanks. Yes, I support. Uh, Commonwealth is 53 countries. Population is uh, two, 2 billion. Um, the session uh, perhaps could be reduced. Uh, I think a number of us made comments about perhaps um, uh, a flash session as is specific. Oh, sorry, it is already a flash. No, I'm Sorry, I'm behind on that. Okay. Well, um, as I say, it, it, the merit is um, the number of governments involved and uh, the topicality and uh, um, the, uh, the the global reach of of the topic. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Uh, any opposition that we should not retain a flash session or intergovernmental organisation? No. Yes. Um, um, it's a, uh, right. Mr. Chairman, it's, it's, it's weakly written. The, the names and affiliation of partners are fairly, they're almost missing. There are no names there. But it is one of the higher ranking intergovernmental proposals after the cutoff of uh, 100. So I suppose um, it can be on the maybe list, but if you read through what they have submitted, it's, it's a bit of a lazy proposal, I'm afraid. Um, I would like a little more detail to be able to make it, but it does on balance on, on the intergovernment. So you might wish to retain it. Um, thank you. I wish to retain it, and uh, German will confirm it. Uh, well, uh, you asked for any oppositions, and uh, <laughs> my comments go out, uh, around those lines. That is, the proposal is uh, poorly written, and um, if we're going to start accepting this uh, sort of proposal, then we're flexibly uh, becoming extremely flexible in what is going to enter at the end of the final list of workshops. Uh, so can we can we then suggest uh, that we would retain on the merits that this is uh, uh, from intergovernmental organization and that uh, we strongly uh, uh, advise and will help uh, to improve the, the quality of the, the proposal and make a meaningful discussion on national cyber security strategies uh, and on, on the case of uh, uh, Commonwealth countries. Lynn, you are in agreement? I am. I also just wanted to point out that it's a new proposer, and one of the things we had wanted to do was to support and mentor new proposers um, with their pro workshop proposals. So thank you. Then we retain this one and move to the next one. Proposal 33, workshop three, 33. Who would like to speak in favor of this and explain the reasoning why we're examining this now? Uh, Frank, please. Okay. Um, I think this is a 
I looked through the proposals and uh, I didn't see any on data retention and it's a new emerging topic that will be the rationale. I don't know if anyone else would think something similar because you, you've seen what has happened in recent history, some countries like China, Russia, on data retention and the impact on all those users. Michael? I did not nominate this one, but I did, I did give it a five ranking. Uh, data retention is a growing issue. We have some people involved from Latin America who probably will never be able to come to an IGF if, if it's not in Latin America. So I, I thought it was a strong proposal on a very important topic. And I was astonished, actually, that the ranking was so low. So thank you. Other opinions? It does not, it does not uh, really add to uh, balance in terms of uh, geography and, and uh, government participation on the topic. I see that uh, Jack is asking and Virat. It is an important topic and I also note that in the speakers that were suggested that inclu included within them is someone from the law enforcement as well as a member of judiciary which w I thought were interesting points of views. So thank you. Virat? Yes, I think there's one positive which is it's an important issue, very important growing issue but also I think it's come into the theme which is human rights which is probably the most oversubscribed uh, theme of all the themes is dominating with 30 percent so um, I think and it's scored uh, very low 178 so we should kind of um, probably put it on the on the second list and see if we can accommodate it and it doesn't help um, the immediate criteria for this yes. round thank you very much for your proposal I, I think we should we should go for this and put it for the moment on the list number two maybe Michael uh, again I stress that there are people on this proposal who just would never come to an IGF people from law enforcement people who are from the Latin America who would never I mean I, I know we look for geographic diversity but on some issues we're bringing new people in and you're never going to convince the people who aren't part of the IGF community to fly a full day I think we should think seriously about the diversity that's added by bringing in a law enforcement perspective and I, I was critical of some of the other human rights panels because they did not have a law enforcement person to balance the uh, concerns about yeah. privacy and data collection. So I, I thought this was more balanced than a lot of those. But again, I, I suspect it got very low rankings because it was so biased, or so, so uh, there was so much, so many panelists from Latin America. But again, that's, that's also because we are getting unique people from Latin America. So thank you, Aida. Yeah, I would, on the other hand, I would also like to stress that on many other proposals, there are people who are listed even as confirmed that have no idea that their name is there. So I don't know if that can be an argument or not. Uh, of course, we, we, we do not know that, but uh, we have gone through these discussions and asked specifically, do not put anyone confirmed if the person has not confirmed, really. Uh, I would still still suggest that we put it on maybe list uh, and and then revisit depending on the situation we're uh, having at the end of this conversation. No one objects. Thank you. So I understand we are examining proposal 57, that is ranked 202. Uh, can we hear comments in that regard?
Yes, Juan. Thank you, Chairman. I, I propose this to be merged with the previous that we had on measurement. Uh, but I don't know if we are doing mergers at this, this point, but uh, I proposed, I give it in the list with that intention, to be merged with the previous one that we had on measurement. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Any, anyone else would like to comment on, on that particular proposal? Yes. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. So we'll... If there's no other support, then we should retain it. Mm -hmm. So let's just say not retain it, go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure at this point. I thought, I think of the criteria that Yanis was trying to apply is that if you'd like to seek a feeling from the room whether there is support for the idea that by accepting this, we are kind of balancing and uh, addressing some gaps, but I don't feel this is the case in regard to that particular proposal. Yes, Mike. Uh, I, I, I know this, top, this area very well, and I don't think this would add a lot to our conversation. I also think there's uh, a lack of, uh, of geographic balance and, even more important, a uh, lack of private sector balance. And I don't think that merging this to the other much higher, higher ranked proposals would strengthen those other proposals. So I would wait until next year and encourage these people to come back with a, a broader, a, a, a more a, 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 a broader panel, more focused. Thank you. I, I think we then could leave that aside on that note. Could we move to the next one, please? So now uh, we'll focus on proposal number 21 that was ranked 74. Is that right? Yes, yeah, 74. Uh, Seeds round table, the free. Seed, seeds round table on the free the internet. Free internet. Free internet. Would anyone like to comment on, on this? Just to, I'm just requesting the secretary to clarify what does it mean the select stakeholder group? It just means the proposal did not select which stakeholder group they belonged to, so we cannot uh, define exactly which stakeholder group they are, but um, yeah. we can also judge it on its merits if you yeah. feel. Yes, Marilyn? Thank you, Chair. Um, actually, I had a question about this one uh, and a couple of others where the proposer of the workshop was not identified and the stakeholder group was not identified. And I find that challenging. Uh, so when we say we're evaluating something on the merits, I think we have an incomplete proposal. Thank you. Uh, I'll turn back to the chair. So thank you, um, uh, Mark. Thanks. I think this brings this proposal brings to the IGF focus on uh, the issues uh, facing small island developing states, Absolutely. and that, that should be spelt out that acronym SIDS in, in the title um, if it goes through. Uh, so we're bringing something important to the IGF that should be there. Uh, I know from uh, um, speaking to, to colleagues representing um, small island developing states that uh, their voice is often not center stage, and, this, and there are a lot of them, and so this brings that. So I support this. Thank you. So thank, thank you. Um, 
I, I think that there is a, a good, good merit in supporting uh, small island uh, developing states. Just on that merit, uh, if we do not have any other workshop on that, I, I would I would propose to retain. And I see the body language suggests that this would be the, the good good thing to do. Uh, and uh, I would put put it on provisional list of uh, retained uh, proposals. Uh, Susan. I, I, <clears throat> I recognize the importance of including um, the SIDS, and, but I would, I'd just like to say that if you look at the content of the proposal, it focuses on zero rating in developing countries. Um, so I think that if the proposal is specific with respect to small island developing states and zero rating otherwise, I think it um, would be a good um, candidate for a merger with uh, the proposal that Lynn suggested a merger with. So thank you, but uh, let, let us look that uh, this was uh, mathematically scored in 74. Uh, 74 in terms of ranking. So I, I think that also on, on that merit, it is relatively high scored, and uh, we need to acknowledge that. Um, Michael? I, I also, I think, uh, strongly agree that small island perspectives are valuable, and I'm sure that's why it got a relatively high ranking. But um, I, I think this topic could be covered in 60 minutes and perhaps even a flash session. It is really very narrowly focused on one particular paper coming out of one particular conference. Uh, it's not a broad discussion. It doesn't pretend to have all sides of the, perspe of the view uh, of, of the topic. So um, if we're looking for diversity of opinion, we're not accomplishing that here. I do think, though, I would strongly support a, a last session and as a compromise, 60 minutes. OK. Uh, I, Avri, sorry, I overlooked you. Uh, my apologies. Thank you. I just want to, I, I, I support uh, leaving it in and, and retaining it and leaving it in at its current length. If you look at the full write-up, yes, there may, there may be issues with it not having had the name of the proposer in the right place, but if you look at it, you see it's three islands, people from three island states proposing it. it it's got a, a diverse panel, and I believe that it really should be retained in its full format. Thank you. So thank you very much. I, I think we will retain it uh, to, to our uh, list one. Uh, we will see if there should be a shortening, but for the moment it, it feels to me that this is uh, something we could, we could uh, go along with. So uh, here I would like to uh, suspend our exercise uh, since uh, uh, colleagues from uh, Stanford University are online. And I hope that technology will not fail us. And uh, I would uh, uh, like to invite uh, propose proponents of uh, deliberate polling at 2015 uh, in five minutes uh, explain uh, the, the project, the, main, the highlights of the project, and leave a few minutes uh, for questions. Uh, we cannot go beyond six. Uh, Geneva time, so therefore we have about 10 minutes uh, for this exercise. The floor is yours. Oh, please unmute yourself. Okay, James, you can go ahead. Seems to have a technical problem.
Uh, James, we cannot hear you. Could you please uh, uh, disconnect and reconnect audio in WebEx? Uh, you can find this on the Quick Start tab. Okay, okay, we hear you now. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Can please you hear me now? Please go ahead, yes, we hear you. Excellent, thank you. So the idea is very simple of deliberative polling. We have done this in uh, 23 countries around the world about 70 times, usually with uh, uh, citizens rather than uh, netizens, or usually with citizens rather than stakeholders. But the basic idea is very simple. We take a random sample. In this case, it will be a stratified random sample of the IGF. Our presumption in this project is that the IGF is a relevant population for internet governance. We will take a stratified random sample representing all sectors and uh, geography uh, and engage it in a serious deliberation. About 300 people. We will also give the same survey to the other members of the IGF before and after. We have a distinguished advisory group that is clarifying key questions that are ripe for discussion in internet governance in uh, three different uh, broad policy areas. And uh, we're working with the advisory group to clarify those questions. The idea of the deliberation is to have small group discussions for several hours, alternated with plenary sessions with w during which questions from the small groups are answered by panels. The question is, what would people think if they really had a good chance for thinking about it? Obviously, the IGF participants are well informed, but they are siloed. They are, um, uh, the different groups uh, could engage in greater uh, cross-sector, cross-geography discussion. The question is, we get the final results of the deliberative poll in confidential questionnaires, and we see the changes of opinion from the initial questionnaire. Usually we get pretty big changes. But in addition to the changes of opinion, we get a sense of why people change or why they don't change. Uh, if I understand correctly, uh, you will be uh, doing this experiment on the margins of IGF, and this will not interfere with uh, uh, normal uh, normal process of IGF. You will have a meeting before yes. before IGF, and you will organize a meeting after IGF. Yes. That's the plan. We, our plan is to um, is to do it. Is to start with a dinner on the minus one to have all day on day zero and a bit of the morning on day one before your opening session. And then we will then collect the results and present them and try to engage with a discussion about the results at the uh, conclusion of the IGF. That's the reason for the workshop proposal at the end to not only present the results but to start a dialogue about them at the very end. So we're at the very beginning and the very end. But the rest of the IGF will, you know, we're, we're, we'll do, we will not interfere with the rest of the IGF in any way. 
But in fact, if we succeed in doing what we hope to, which is to have a, a random sample deliberating, a stratified random sample, and we can share the questionnaire with everybody else, this becomes a controlled experiment to see what is the value added added, if anything, of the intensive, balanced, hopefully thoughtful, deliberative process uh, with, uh, that we are doing compared to the rest of the IGF, so, because the other participants will have gone through the rest of the IGF. So we're, this is meant to, we hope to add something, but of course it is a pilot or an experiment, but if it works, we would hope to do it at other uh, IGF uh, or IGF type events uh, because a lot of people involved in internet governance on our advisory group think that that something like this could add something and since this is now a well tested uh, method that's been used around the world um, uh, we could um, uh, we, we hope to pilot in this context so thank you uh, any questions Marilyn one, one question and then we, we will uh, uh, suspend the session. Please, Thank Marilyn. You. Thank you, Marilyn Kate speaking. Um, perhaps I pose my question. Uh, it's really for more information and then uh, perhaps information could be sent to the MAG list. A couple of uh, questions. Uh, is it, uh, is, are the names of the advisory group members available uh, in a public way that, so that we could see who they are? Secondly, I just want to ask a question about it's a complicated question, but since there's an effort to do a stratified group, that means it will have to be drawn from the registered attendees. And if that is the case, actually I do have a concern uh, that we can address offline. People are coming because they are booked to do other things uh, all day on day zero, and the morning of day one actually will interfere with the rest of the purpose. So I just would like to have an opportunity to take it up maybe online uh, and hear more. Yes. Uh, first of all, the uh, list of the advisory group is public. Uh, I'm not sure what was sent to you, but we can certainly uh, send that. And I think you'll agree it's a very good group. And of course, we're open to suggestions. Uh, in addition, the, um, uh, we're wrestling with that about the stratified random sample. We hope to um, actually begin also uh, uh, with, uh, on a rolling basis with previous attendees. We hope that the people who are willing to accept the invitation well, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a variety of pre-conferences that people could go to. Think of this as another pre-conference, but if people don't want to do it, we will continue uh, with stratified random sampling, um, asking people until we uh, get a, a reasonable representation. Uh, people will hopefully understand that this is a unique opportunity if they've been randomly uh, drawn in the sample. Um, uh, but uh, we will not interfere with the regular IGF process. Perhaps there's some way that uh, we can correspond by email or phone afterwards. I'm uh, James Fishkin, that's jfishkin at stanford.edu, and um, maybe uh, we can send contact details about all the um, advisory group members and the working group that's trying to implement this. And, we're happy to follow up at your convenience uh, to try to um, uh, get your counsel and advice to make this work without interfering with other processes. So thank, thank you, James. And then maybe another question from remote participant. Uh, yeah, Peter asked uh, how this uh, proposal uh, uh, came before the MAG. Uh, was there an internal champion uh, proposer? Uh, I'm not I can I can answer uh, Jameson on this I, I was I was suggesting that since this is a experiment linked uh, on well, not linked but uh, w which will take place on the margins of uh, IGF I suggested that uh, information should be given to mag uh, uh, in this respect and uh, I can tell you, you. I, I am on also an advisory group and uh, uh, Hartmut uh, also is an advisory group uh, for, for the experiment. 
So thank, thank you, James, for, uh, you. for, for this uh, uh, presentation. It would be good, most probably, to send the materials uh, to, uh, to the list, uh, uh, mag list, that uh, people are uh, informed about the, the substance of the, uh, of the experiment. Great. We'll be very happy to do that. And thank you for the opportunity so to you. be part of this discussion. Yes, thank you very much, James. Thank you. So uh, we have reached the uh, limit of today's session. It's uh, 6 o'clock. We need to break. Uh, we have uh, not concluded uh, full uh, examination of uh, proposals. We will continue tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, uh, we will have full statistics. Actually, tonight, uh, uh, Secretariat will send out full statistics on decisions that we have made. But uh, since uh, we cannot uh, stop this exercise in the middle, we need to get uh, down to the list. And I hope that uh, uh, tomorrow, in the first part of the day, we will get through all proposals. And then, um, even, if earlier, even, even better. Uh, and then, after lunch, we will make uh, final, uh, final decisions. Uh, for the moment, I was I was told uh, that uh, we have um, uh, we we have uh, made uh, improvement and in, balance uh, by bringing uh, two additional proposals from technical community, uh, three from intergovernmental organizations, uh, three from uh, civil society. Uh, but on, on topics, uh, not on civil society, uh, and that makes eight. Uh, remaining is un 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 undecided. So, questions? What's our count at the moment, Mr. Savary? Uh, count, count, uh, count is uh, 70 plus uh, Eight or nine? Nine now. Nine. It should be nine. Yeah. Nine. So for the moment we're we're 79, but we need still uh, continue examination of the list because we have not concluded it, and uh, we will continue tomorrow. Dominique. I just wanted to say after this meeting, there's a common out reach group meeting right here. So can we just gather here? Thanks. Thank you, Leah. Uh, thank you. This is last speaking. Uh, just a question about tomorrow's agenda. Um, if you're going to address that later, and, uh, I would just like to, to stress something that I've posted on the mag list, and that is um, whether it would be possible to pivot back uh, during the session tomorrow to the conversation about the main sessions. Thank you. So that depends how quickly we will uh, conclude our work. Uh, so certainly, uh, I intend to circulate interim proposal for main sessions uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, Cheryl? Just wanted a quick clarification. So the list that Shanghai sent out earlier, um, the Excel sheet that we've been working off of, are those the only proposals that are for discussion? So if we submitted proposals and they're not on that list, does that mean for, s for whatever, so they didn't make it? Is that correct? or? Uh, this this what, what we discussed, that uh, uh, in order to facilitate that uh, MAG members should uh, submit uh, information to Secretariat, and that was compiled in one, one list of 50 proposals that now we are going through. So the cutoff was at 50, so, okay, I understand. Uh, cutoff was not uh, determined. It was just those who were submitted were now working on the basis of submissions. So I had some. Uh, uh, yeah, is there a number missing? Yeah, there were, there were some numbers missing. Okay, I can just come and see me. And Thank you. Marilyn? Thank you, Chair. I uh, posted to the MAG list, but I, this is just a reminder that the WISIS Plus 10 main session or sessions um, will meet tomorrow morning at 9, assuming I'm not interfering with your meeting. Uh, and everyone who's already said they're interested or hasn't yet said they're interested should come along. Um, we'll talk about the scenario options, which uh, I think we covered in our discussion, and that is if it's a three-hour session or if New York uh, participates. But I really welcome, even if you haven't indicated your interest, you should uh, come. We'll meet here unless Chang'e Tai finds me another room. 
So thank you, remote participant. Uh, Peter Dengel Trash um, uh, uh, made a comment uh, on chat probably regarding the Mr. Fishkin's presentation. Uh, he asked, uh, uh, does it need a MAG blessing or we are just being informed about the peripheral activity? I think it is more more uh, information because this is not uh, part of IGF, but it is organized on the margins of IGF. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can we make two requests from the Secretariat? One is uh, if they could provide us the list of the nine that got through, just so we know that that's 79 then. And then when, uh, just a start point of where the list begins tomorrow. From the 50, I think we've... We could, the, the list begins where we ended today, so that'll be... 78. Trying to get a confirmation on the number. So one, 151. So we omitted 53. Since we omitted 53, we decided on 20. So we will start with the 153 and we will continue with 151 afterwards. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, your uh, diligent work and have a good evening and we'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp. Please uh, come, come here at 10 o'clock sharp. Thank you very much interpreters for helping us and scribes uh, transcribing our conversation.